Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're gonna to talk about our 2JZ billet timing belt tensioner bracket. And what I have is a factory tensioner bracket, an aftermarket billet steel tensioner bracket, and our billet aluminum tensioner bracket. The reason why we went back with the billet aluminum tensioner bracket is because we were able to add enough material to overcome the weakness in the factory tensioner and its tendency to break. Keeping with an aluminum bracket, but we did a bronze insert bushing, which if you look at what has happened with this steel on steel in this billet one, it has gotten to the point in a relatively low amount of time that the there's a lot of corrosion and this bolt no longer moves freely in the bracket. So that will cause this to stick. I've had Toyota Supers come in with bent valves. And what happened was the steel tensioner had fused itself to the steel bolt. The tensioner could no longer move and the belt would lose track, rip the teeth off the belt and the engine's now out of time. One of the reasons why we went back with this bush design is just that the steel cannot mate with the bronze bushing. It is an OEM quality approach. The reason why the OEM had a bushing in there was to keep the dissimilar materials from ever mating. So when you're installing your real street tensioner, you're gonna reuse the factory hardware and the factory idler pulley. I do not reuse the factory uh, lock washer. I use a little bit of red Loctite on that nut and I torque it to 26 foot pounds. This is a super important part. This washer had been installed on this car before. This is the incorrect washer. The OEM Toyota washer, this is the only washer like it on the car. It is chamfered on the ID hole. And the reason why they do that is if you decided that you were gonna over torque this piece of hardware and it starts to pull this neck out, it doesn't bottom in a common washer. It actually has a bevel to compensate for that. So, Take a real good look at this washer and make sure you're using the OEM washer. The other thing is, is make sure this bolt is not bent. This can bend over time or with misuse. Put it in a drill, spin it, make sure the bolt is still true. You do not want to reinstall it with a bent bolt. When you put this together, I'll put a little bit of anti-seize on this collar of the bolt. Slide it together. OEM Toyota washer. Now this is another important step. This hole that goes into the factory aluminum water pump it does not get a very high torque reading. It's gonna to be 28 foot pounds, and they want you to put a little bit of blue Loctite on it. Blue won't season the aluminum. This goes through to the crankcase, so if you don't put sealant on that, you can get oil coming through that set of threads, add onto the timing belt, and it will make a mess. Reinstall the idler, just like you would the factory one. Torque it to 28 foot pounds. Make sure that it moves freely. This is the range of motion. Whoever's worked on this car before has ground on the water pump thinking that this moved further. If this can move past this point, the timing belt is no longer intact and you have bigger problems. So this is the range of motion. When you go back to reinstall the grenade pin in your tensioner, uh, do not smash this closed quickly in a vise. It should be done over about five minutes in small increments to allow the hydraulics inside of this piston to compress at a reasonable rate of time. So I can reinstall the timing belt, reinstall the tensioner, pull the grenade pin out of it, engine's ready to run again. I have not seen a tremendous amount of these things break. However, when they break, it is a catastrophic problem if you have aftermarket camshafts because the factory OEM 2JZ is a non-interference engine. And once you get some aftermarket camshafts in it, it becomes an interference engine. And what that means is when the engine is out of time, the pistons can meet the valves, which is, no good, you have to take the engine apart and fix it after that. So it's a good investment in the realm of safety. It's a very durable part. Uh, it is a timing belt, so it does give under acceleration, deceleration, but a lot of force can be put on this tensioner through things like anti-lag and the revlimiter or money shifting, things like that. So it's a good upgrade part and I recommend that you buy one.